I'm Robert Bailick, the horticulture field specialist in the southwest part of the state. I also have the MU Extension Horticulture Facebook page and the MU Extension Master Gardeners Facebook page. You can find us there. And the Ask Missouri Master Gardener group on Facebook, which is a Q&A education page. We've got four kinds of leaf scorch we're going to talk about today. Winter leaf scorch, of course, in winter, summer leaf scorch, sun scald, and bacterial leaf scorch. And these have similar symptoms, and sometimes the names get mixed up in when, we're, when we're talking about this. And as educated gardeners, we want to make sure that we can actually discern the difference. So winter leaf scorch, and this is an example on holly that was sent by some of our folks further north in the state. I'm in the southwest part of the state. We haven't had much damage on holly this winter. And we'll talk about why in just a second. But on the left, we see a holly bush that's lost a lot of its leaves and you can see them on the ground there. And we see this pattern in here with the chlorotic centers and the dead edges, right? And the scorch happens from the edges toward the inside, as we can see on these leaves here. And that's on holly affecting the leaves. It also happens on rhododendrons. And in extreme cases, the leaves actually fall off just like the hollies, but sometimes they just get discolored and brown like we see on, on some of these photos here. This is a leather leaf viburnum. Notice these are all broadleaf evergreens that we're getting the scorch on. And that's because these uh, evergreens uh, still need to have water. So here's some of the causes of leaf scorch. We have cold, dry winds and lack of humidity that dries out those leaves. And we have root damage and improper pruning. Those are three causes of leaf scorch. And the reason we get the scorch is because the water from the roots is not reaching the leaves. And there's lots of reasons for that. And it's not reaching the leaves fast enough. And so some of the symptoms we see, of course, are the leaves and stems turning brown from the tips. We get the browning moves, moves from the leaf edges toward the center. That's important, right? It's not spotty. It's from the edges toward the center and with the veins sometimes remaining viable. And it may happen in just one day. Overnight, my holly leaves fell off. I've heard that several times. And that's because of this winter leaf scorch. And it may occur just on part of the plant, but usually it's the whole plant. To remedy this, we need to be sure we prune at the proper time, that we don't want to have some new growth that hasn't hardened off going into winter because that growth cannot handle the cold temperatures without drying out. And so we get scorch. We want to make sure we water the plants properly. So we actually water our broadleaf evergreens in late fall. We're talking about November. Right? This might be after your first frost, but we don't want them going into the winter with dry feet. They have to have dampness down there in order to keep those leaves viable all winter. We can actually induce leaf scorch on our own by using salts, sesso salts, especially rock salt with sodium in it that can actually desiccate the roots. And so we want to avoid using those salts, maybe use something a little more benign like sand or sawdust or maybe uh, potassium chloride. We want to encourage good root growth during the summer, and that will depend on the kind of plant you're growing. And mostly right plant, right place. I'm sure we've all heard that before, that if you have a plant that's sensitive to our winters, it might not be the best plant for your area. This is an example of improper pruning. It's a boxwood hedge that was pruned in September, and the leaves grew out, and they did not get hardened off before we got our freezes. And so the leaf tips are brown. You can see the, the tips of the branches themselves. So improper pruning can cause leaf scorch, and not just on boxwood, but any evergreens really that you're going to prune in late summer, you don't want to do that. Best time to prune those is in the spring or maybe just before spring. Summer leaf scorch is just a little bit different. Of course, it happens in the summer, and a lot of the reasons for that might be the same. See, it does look the same. We come off the dead from the tips. The mid veins might seem viable, and here on the right with the hosta, we see the dead tips. Now there's holes in this hosta leaf and that's a different issue. And we're gonna talk about that in just a second. So in the summer leaf scorch, it's again, it's too much rapid water loss from the leaves and root damage is typically the cause, but also dry windy heat when the plant can't keep the water in the leaves because it has root damage and can't handle the heat, right? So we have to make sure our roots are staying healthy. And of course the symptoms are just the same as winter leaf scorch, except they occur in the summer. And this may happen after just one day. The browning moves from the edges toward the center, same as the winter leaf scorch, but it happens in summer. And so the remedies again are to water properly. We wanna water deeply, but infrequently. We want to improve the soil and drainage to give a good root system. And if there are salts that you used in the winter, 
the deciduous plants won't show that damage until summer and it will look like summer leaf sports or which is about hot when you may have actually a sodium buildup in your soil from using rock salt. And so one of the remedies for removing sodium for your soil is to apply some gypsum and the calcium and the gypsum flushes the sodium out and can help alleviate those sodic soils. Um, we flush excessive fertilizers out too, you know, we can get summer leaf scorch if you put too much fertilizer on your plants in spring. It's the same as adding rock salt because it's still a salt, so we want to, don't want to do that. You might want to relocate your specimen to a cooler or less windy place if you get summer leaf scorch. And we see a lot of these Japanese maples that in the summertime, they always get brown leaves because they're in spots where it's too hot, too sunny, too windy. Maybe there's too much reflective heat off of pavement or garages and those types of things. So here's our hosta with the leaves with the holes. And that is not necessarily the desiccation from the summer scald. That is actually sun scald from being in too bright of light, right? This doesn't have to do with being dry. It has to do with being in a too bright of a light situation. And here's a simpler example on tomato plant. Now this tomato plant was grown inside and moved outside. And of course, first thing he did was wilt and they watered it. And then all of a sudden they get these brown spots on their leaves. And it's the same thing with sun scald. You get these dead patches in your leaves. And this tomato plant is not quite as severe as that hosta. But if it was, those dead patches would be holes too. And it's not to be confused with bugs. You won't see any bugs in there. Um, but you will notice that it was wilted before and you water it and it turns out they have some dead spots on it. And that's from sun scald. Sun scald happens a lot when you bring your house plants outside in the summer and you'll get an orchid, for example, that has this necrotic area on it. Jade plants, you know, people put them out in bright sun because they're succulents and they need that. And they'll get this kind of a tissue that's just, just a warty looking tissue. Even your burning bush, your winged euonymus, some folks will say, oh, it's turning colors early. Well, actually, no, it's because it's getting sun scalded. It's a shade plant. And sometimes folks will go and prune it in June or July and expose those inner leaves to direct sun and it will sun scald out like that. So too much light is the reason for sun scald. Maybe you have previously shaded plants that are exposed to full sun or you've done some improper pruning like we just described. And the symptoms are that the chlorophyll actually gets destroyed from having so much light. So the leaves fade. You might even get translucent leaf patches and you get these different necrotic patches as we've seen in those photos. Um, the dead areas may be visible after just one day. You can do this, and it may occur on part of the plant. And part of the plant would occur on, usually is in the upper part of the plant, the top leaves, the ones that are facing the sun most directly. And so the remedies would be to slowly acclimatize your plants and bringing them outside. It's a process that takes about two weeks. Um, gradually expose them to the light. Okay, same with your seedlings that you're bringing out to your garden. You know, you grew them inside under lights. That's nowhere near as bright as the sun. And so you need to bring them out to the shade first and get them exposed a little bit, okay? And we want to prune at the proper time for the shrub. And again, right plant, right place. And the last one we want to talk about is bacterial leaf scorch. And this looks strikingly like summer's leaf scorch because it has the same symptoms, except it's not due to drought, it's due to bacteria, okay? And this is a bacterium called Xylella fastidiosa. And Xylella, because it blocks the xylem tissue, which of course is used to bring the water up to the leaves so that the leaves dry out. But you water your tree and nothing happens. It's a bacteria that clogs that. Only a few branches might be affected at first on your nice tree. This usually affects oak trees, but it can also affect sycamores, mulberries, and other trees as well. And it's noticeable in midsummer and fall when water demand is high. And so folks will water the trees thinking that, oh, it just needs water, but it never goes away. And even the next spring, the tree might leaf out normally, but all of a sudden you'll see it back again in midsummer and in more of the tree. And it might take several years to kill the entire tree as other pests move in too, as the tree health declines. But the thing about this bacterial leaf scorch is that there is no cure for the disease. So if you think you have a tree that has bacterial leaf scorch and you're not sure if it's summer scorch or bacterial leaf scorch, please contact our MU Plant Diagnostic Clinic. And here's the website for it. And they'll be happy to test that for you to see if that bacteria is present in those leaves. So here we have a guide on leaf scorch of ornamental trees and shrubs. It's publication number G6881, if you wanna do a search for that one. And that's where most of this information came from. And there are other sources as well that we've used from University of Illinois, University of New Hampshire, Missouri Botanical Garden, which has some excellent sources. And also our integrated pest management group has bacterial leaf scorch in the Midwest Plain States article. That is uh, really quite good.